baby! What are you doing in my shed? Well, this is a bit too thick. What about this? But would it split when we cut it? That's the problem. <laughs> it's just a bit, it's a bit thin and spindly made, that's all. Yeah, because the outer layer gets cut on that when you do it. What about this? Again, that's a really thin and spindly, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a shame because they, everything else seems to be well warped. What about these boards as well? Because they're a bit more to the size of your arm. Yeah, that might. You need two of them, and that's about right. That looks like it might fit. Yeah, and 40 mil. This is called a silent stay, and what this has got on it is a little, uh, a little slide. So this gives us the ability, hopefully, to be able to stop the laptop lid from hinging back too far. So we'll get it set up and uh, it'll open and hopefully lock in place. So we pop that on there like that. Now, what's the front and what's the back? So that's the back. That's of, the back, yeah. yeah. Oh shit, what just fell off of it? Oh, it's just a little bit uh, of Oh, okay, bird. okay, okay. Right, so, so this will be the front of the, of the, of the unit then. Yeah. Look at that, it's perfect as well. Those little uh, wooden slats will fit around the outside of that beautifully. And then we've got enough there to make the rest of it. That's absolutely bang on. So we've built this huge wooden case at the moment just to get it started, a kind of proof of concept. Proof of, proof of concept. Yeah. So Ravi will talk about the, the PCB in a second, but if we just pop the keyboard down there, lift up that PCB, yeah. what, what my job is, is to start putting together uh, all of the power supply systems for this. So there's a whole bunch of lithium ion cells in here and you'll see a lot of this during the build videos you'll see uh, Ravi putting the case together and all that kind of stuff. And so basically uh, this will go um, under, under, under the PCB here, under the main motherboard. The motherboard will sit on the deck here. And, and we've got a layer of protective insulation as well so there'll be no shorting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very important there's no shorting. Um, and then the other thing uh, Ravi came across here is a lovely little 10 inch monitor which has got a composite uh, input on it, yeah. which will plug directly into the PCB, um, into the motherboard, which means then uh, all you need is keyboard and power supply and a mouse and, and boom, everything's ready to go. Totally, and the cool thing about this monitor is it doesn't need turning on, you don't need to find a button, 
So as soon as it's powered, it will turn on and it takes the 14 hertz signal for Amiga and displays it really nicely so we don't need any upscaler, expensive Indivision, VGA, stuff like that. We just go straight out of the old school composite and we're going to solder to the bottom of the board to basically tap that and we're going to do the same with the left and right phonos. Yeah, cause there's, um, so there's a, a small amplifier built into the, into the screen here, a stereo amplifier built into the screen. Um, the other thing I'm doing on the power supply side, in fact I'll bust all these open, yeah. so you can see, would you like to open one Remy? Oh lovely. Yeah, it's like Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then basically what we've got here then is a bit difficult to see, but we've got a couple of meters. Oh, cool. And these wow. meters are little digital volt meters, DVMs, and those guys will sit on the side here. And ultimately what they'll do is they'll show you what kind of state the battery's in, so you know when you need to recharge them. Being lithium-ion batteries, they're sort of sensitive, and you want to make sure that um, you don't overcharge them. You also want to make sure that you don't let them undercharge, because if yeah. they undercharge, uh, the, the cells will go down and they'll stop working. So, um, so yeah, so we've got some meters on there, we're going to put some switches on it, big yeah. knobs and dials and, and well, the, maybe the, the copper meters, tubes. Oh no, what am I talking about? The, the, meter, <laughs> the meters are going to be down the side here, so you're going to be able to see them. And Howard says he's going to customise a, a 3D printed kind of piece down there. Yeah, we'll put a 3D printed side piece on here so that you've got access to the ports. Yeah, that's And so that you've got the switches and everything on there and all that kind of good stuff. So that's the plan. This is where we've got with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're off to the States pretty soon, aren't you? Yeah, I'm leaving you with this and hopefully it won't blow up. Yeah, and then I'll we'll do my best <laughs> not to destroy it. Yeah. And then we'll yeah. come up, yeah. come back and yeah. start to customise it more. Excellent. Yeah. So I've got some questions for you, mate. What's this right here? Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using for the hard drive solution because if you have a floppy drive it rises quite high off here and I guess it's probably going to draw a bit of extra power whereas this is a tiny SD adapter okay and I think that'll probably draw a lot less power so then. basically then this is in place of a floppy drive yeah this or is in place, place of a hard drive, drive. right yeah, so, so so this is a SanDisk um, uh, uh, SD card which sits in here 32 gig card yeah okay and then that plugs into the motherboard so that's all through of your, IDE yeah. that's all of your all of your memory and all of your non-volatile all, yeah, all nice. the Amiga stuff this is yeah. a keyboard adapter so I can use USB okay keyboards on the Amiga Cool. So it, it sits on the keyboard chip and it actually takes over control. Right. And then you can plug that in internally and have that. And then you've got a keyboard as, as well. A, as a keyboard. Excellent. And we've got some LEDs as well, I think, that we need to sort of um, yeah, so these wire are, up. These as well. are the Amiga LEDs, and I'm going to extend these wires and maybe have them kind of here or so, somewhere nicely where you can see where you can hard see what's drive going access on. and yeah. power. Nice, nice. But also, it's quite good because if we have too low power, the Amiga LED will start blinking. So there's there's a few little items in there which uh, kind of help. But also, we had the RF shielding on before. And the RF shielding, when it was on, this, this motherboard stuck out. Yeah, it was a little bit yeah. too high with the RF shielding on. So Ravi assures me the Amiga motherboards are used to being run without the RF shield yeah. on. Now this might violate CE compliance, but we're not really <laughs> worried about it. <laughs> yeah. so, but basically, it means that we're going to be able to have this really flat on top, and then hopefully, if we could take the back off this keyboard or something, have that quite flat as well. So the whole thing should hopefully shut in a kind of flat way. And it should look something like that. Oh. Beautiful. Well, a bit prettier, hopefully, <laughs> when we're done, but yeah, can't wait. This is going to be great fun.